Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm joined today by Stephen Turnbull. He is Director of Marketing at Freescale. Stephen, it's great to see you again. Good to see you too, Martha. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So we're going to talk about small cells today. Mobile World Congress is coming up, and ahead of that, uh, you've got a couple of announcements. But before we get into that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the market in general. We've been hearing that small cells are going to take off any day now. We've been hearing that for a while, and uh, I'm curious about, about your thoughts now, what's changing. Uh, obviously, uh, Freescale thinks that there's still a, a huge opportunity and, and in a specific part of the market, I think. So can we start off by talking about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, we see it in a couple of different ways. Um, I think, first of all, there was uh, the femtocell market for 3G. We started some years ago and hit a level of, of critical mass as people look for ways to, to fix coverage issues. Um, I think what we're seeing now, specifically with the deployment of LTE, uh, is, is a more rapid adoption of small cells across different form factors, so true, true head net deployments. Um, we were, uh, we'd be very fortunate to have a strong showing in the macro cell space. We've seen very strong demand as uh, many operators in different regions are rolling out LTE networks. Uh, that started in, in earnest last year and is continuing this year. And what's happening with a very slight lag to that, we're now seeing the small cells roll out behind. And so Freescale has, has had commercial deployments on LTE uh, since last year, starting in the second half of last year, with not just our hardware, but also our software. And we're seeing that uh, growing uh, through this year. So we'll ship very significant volumes on, on small cells this year, as well as, as macro. So you know, we, we really do see genuine volume growth in, in the small cell market coming now driven by LTE, uh, we believe. And so when you say significant volumes, is that in the Femto area or, or more Metro cell? What, what part of the market? So what we're, what we're seeing uh, initially is, is Femto and Enterprise. Uh, however, um, one of the things we're reacting to with our, our, our new announcement and our new uh, products is that now that the macro cell deployments have happened uh, very broadly in North America, in Japan, starting now in, in China, we're seeing a, a move towards providing more infill with metro cells. So I think the, the operators are comfortable with that model, the metro cell and micro cell operating with the same O&M. So they've got a seamless network, seamless handover, uh, common services, quality of service, uh, billing and so on. Um, and there's a, there's a desire to have a software compatible, um, lower cost, lower power, optimized metro cell which can provide that high capacity underneath the, the umbrella coverage that they've got in place with their microcells. And so that gets into today's announcement, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, what we're announcing today is a new product called the B3421. It's targeted uh, specifically at the metro cell space. So we have we have taken all that's best in our portfolio, which is scalable, and so customers who are working on Smaller cells can scale up to this and leverage their software investment. But more importantly, as I was just saying in the macro cell space, a lot of operators now are going to our customers and saying, we'd like to scale down from your macro uh, cell solutions. And we're providing uh, an opportunity for them to do that with a code compatible uh, device. And can we talk a little bit about the backhaul solutions? Uh, certainly, certainly. Uh, one of the things with this device, we've sized it very specifically for uh, two 20 megahertz carriers. Uh, there's a lot of uh, requirements in the market just now for carrier aggregation. A lot of customers asking for that in this space. Uh, but also there's, there's people looking at using wireless for backhaul, whether it be relay mode or non-line of sight, uh, using a WiMAX type scheme or whatever. So we want to provide the bandwidth that we could do both front haul and back haul uh, with this product. Um, metro cells are still in lower volumes than, than, than residential or indoor cells. Volumes we now see are picking up quite dramatically. Um, but of course, back haul is always going to be a challenge. The more sites there are, uh, the more back haul challenges go with that. There isn't always the opportunity to get fiber to the side of a building or a rooftop or a lamp post or wherever the, the metro cell is being deployed. So then you have to look for wireless backhaul, is that what you're saying? It's an option. It's an option. Uh, what we want to do is make sure we're able to support as many uh, backhaul styles as our customers want to implement. 
Uh, we see a range of deployments, I say from rooftop to even cable mounted um, uh, deployments and sometimes it's easy to get fibre um, for backhaul and many times it's not and in metropolitan areas uh, microwave has limitations in terms of line of sight and being able to reach uh, different relay nodes to, to relay the signal. Now I know that for some of the indoor deployments, Ethernet was a was a backhaul solution. When you have like a rooftop deployment, is there an opportunity to to still take advantage of Ethernet inside the building, or no, you can't do that? It depends on uh, what deal the OEM has and the operator in terms of what what, uh, what the the own and what they have access to. Of course. Um, practically, yes, Ethernet could be an option if you're, you're on the top of the building. Um, the detail may be different depending on who owns the building and whether you have access to the network in the building. Okay, okay, great. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, the carrier aggregation feature. I know that we're hearing more and more about that and uh, we saw some exciting news out of Finland last week with some Category 6 speeds and I'm, I'm curious about you know what exactly um, your solution brings to carrier aggregation, what can be aggregated and what, what you think that will lead to. Yeah, so as I say, we support two 20 megahertz carriers, so up to 40 megahertz aggregated. Uh, we have a macro cell device which will do more than that, but we're targeting a very specific uh, power and performance point uh, with this device. We have the latest version of our layer one accelerator, uh, where we provide a lot of offload for release 10 and release 11 uh, functionality. Uh, so, for example, uplink and downlink comp, um, ICIC. Um, carrier aggregation, uh, advanced MIMO techniques, we've got 4x4 MIMO support on this device which is fairly unique in this class of device and we offload all of that, so we offload 80-90% of the downlink chain uh, which means the part can be smaller and more power and cost optimised. And what type of speeds are you seeing in tests? Uh, so we're supporting on this device um, and we have existing silicon with similar uh, you know, supersets of the functionality, so we know what's feasible here. Um, we're going to support a 300 megabit downlink and 150 megabit uplink, and that can either be uh, shared across uh, two um, two sectors, or we can we can do an aggregated sector. We can do two sectors of two by two MIMO, or we can do a single sector of four by four MIMO. Okay, and this this is uh, sampling now, but it's not it's not demoing right now, right? We, we have a, its predecessor, which we announced uh, about 18 months ago, the BE4420, which is available now and customers are using for development purposes. Uh, we will have this part available for customers later this year. Okay, okay, terrific. And I'd like to hear a little bit about um, the embedded software. I, I know from our previous conversations that that's very important to your customers and that, that uh, you consider yourself a leader there. So I'd like to hear a little bit about uh, what's new um, with the embedded software in this in this iteration? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I, I do believe Freescale was one of the first to, to commercially deploy um, LTE uh, with our software and hardware. Uh, we now have a very substantial resource focused on the, on the Layer One Phi, and we do uh, aligned releases with our, our Layer Two and Layer Three partners, so we can provide customers an end-to-end -end working system and. Um, in this device, it's a real step up in terms of the functionality. We're supporting up to 256 users, uh, and that uh, drives and release 10 features. So our previous releases have been release 9. This is release 10. It's a much larger use count. Features such as 4x4 MIMO, COMP, etc., drive a much more complex uh, software product. Um, but we're, we're uh, well advanced in our development and are lining up to be doing demonstrations of the software within a quarter of having silicon and we will have the full commercial release of the software in line with the commercial release of the fully qualified silicon also. And we don't just do the layer one, we also have a full commercial transport solution and one of the nice things about this device, we're actually able to offload the entire transport solution and provide the autonomous IP sex so that we can again reduce the loading on the processor cores and help keep the part at lower power and more optimized in terms of its uh, processing elements. Now having the, the full tr commercial transport solution, does that differentiate you from some of your competitors? Uh, absolutely, um, all solutions are different. Um, we have of course on the processor side of Freescale's business, 
a huge experience in packet processing. We're able to bring that uh, to the solution. We also have a very high performance uh, processor code, the E6500, to do all the layer two and layer three, as well as high end um, control and O&M. Um, other architectures offload that onto DSP cores and other uh, hardware, which isn't quite as efficient. So we think we've got a well balanced, very efficient mix of layer one processing as well as higher layer stack processing uh, on this device. Okay. We great. also. Go ahead. As I said, we bring some new features as well. Um, so we've always had on our high-end devices Cipri, and we've had 10 interfaces on our low-end devices like uh, JDEC Interface 207. We marry that together on this device as well as Cipri. Uh, we also have JDEC 207, uh, JDEC 204B, which is the streaming uh, RFIC interface. Uh, we've got SATA on this device to support uh, local content caching, which is a growing trend. Uh, we've got multiple channels of Gen 2 PCI Express uh, to hook up Wi-Fi chipsets for Wi-Fi offload. And we've sized the backhaul uh, such that we can do LTE and Wi-Fi backhaul simultaneously. Uh, and we have a new uh, piece of IP in this device and that we've added a digital front end, uh, which can support a full occupied 40 megahertz of bandwidth and provide you know, much higher efficiency for the RF front ends to cut the overall power. Uh, and that lets us do power over Ethernet solutions for the full use case of the device. Okay, great, great. So just touching on a couple of those points, you mentioned content caching. So yeah. this is like a, a popular media title that a carrier might need to deliver over and over again, and they can, they can cache it in a nearby location and deliver it to the whole neighborhood. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, and there's, there's a lot of discussion and some move in this direction. It's still fairly new. Um, we see it evolving in two different ways. We hear carriers talking about instant messaging and Facebook and having a lot of users, especially young users, who are online downloading pages. Uh, but these pages aren't all refreshing all the time, so rather have them go all the way through the network every time, they cache the latest download uh, on a server near the base station, and that way they only have to pick up the refreshes, not reload the whole page. Uh, but also, for example, you can imagine in a, in a maps situation, if you're searching for a map, it's likely to be a map of the area close to where you are, close to the base station. You know, so there's the opportunity to, to cache content that might be locally interesting, maps, stores, etc. Okay, so, um, and again, that, that requires a carrier server nearby, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, and there's, great. There's, some, there's some microservers now we can talk about that can go next to the base station or in the base station. So there's various deployment uh, models being, being looked at. Okay, excellent. And then you also mentioned uh, Wi-Fi backhaul as one opportunity. And so, can you just speak a little bit about the Wi-Fi connectivity that's that's part of your solution? Is it is it integrated, or is it um, does it work with lots of different Wi-Fi chipsets? How does that work? Right. So uh, most of our customers still look at Wi-Fi as an option rather than something they want to burden the solution with every time. Uh, also, there's a range of different sizing of Wi-Fi. So we provide connectivity with PCI Express. Um, people are using it as offload um, for front of all for, for, for customers, not just for backhaul. It is an option for backhaul. We also have customers using WiMAX type schemes for non line of sight cellular backhaul. And of course, release 10 will get relay mode, so having two 20 megahertz carriers, one can be used for front haul and one for backhaul for a relay mode type uh, solution. So we, we support a range of different implementations, front and backhaul, uh, and we have the capacity of the device to do that. Excellent. Okay, and just getting back for a minute to your carrier customers, I know you can't probably talk specifics, but you mentioned at the beginning that um, as carriers come to the end of some of their macro cell deployments, the interest in the metro cells was picking up. So can we infer that, that maybe some of the most eager customers are, are those that are, are um, far along in their LTE rollouts? Uh, yes, I, I think that that's fair to say. I mean, some of them have announced that they're going to roll out small cells this year as well. So um, that's not all uh, trade secrets. Obviously, we're dealing primarily with the telcos who are building the equipment. Um, although we do have a lot of operators reach out to us to get feedback and where the roadmap is going and, and what the opportunities might be going forward. But yes, I think now we see in North America a large deployment of LTE, same in Japan. There's more of a move now towards infill to find that additional capacity now that coverage is, is in place. Okay, excellent. Is there anything else that you'd like to discuss on this? 
Uh, no, I think just to say, just to highlight, we do have a full portfolio. We have in our microcell solution the highest performance device in the market today. And we also have a high volume production shipping femto solution for LTE. So we do uh, FD and TDLTE. We have cell search solutions. We have a very rich uh, software product that goes with the hardware. And, and, and with the B3, we think we really have a very highly optimized and, and probably the most integrated solution in the market to support the, the growing metro cell market. All right, Stephen Turnbull, Director of Marketing at Freescale. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks very much, Martha. Thank you for your time.